Hi, I'm Heather Valentine, educator and blogger with The Sewing Loft. One of my favorite things to do is share easy tips and simple techniques to improve your everyday sewing. Today, I'm going to show you how to showcase your team spirit with a simple color block jacket. We're going to start off with a commercial pattern and create our own design. I've gone ahead and just traced out the front of how I want to do it, and I've, I've created my style lines. Make sure when you're tracing off your pattern that you include all the markings from your pattern. You don't want to miss, miss one, otherwise it'll be difficult to put it together. Just go ahead, draw your line, cut it across, and add your seam allowance. Seam allowance is really important. I've laid out my fabric in a gray and red color block. You may want to work on your school colors. You can see that there's so many different colors to choose from. I think the gray and red fits nicely with my pattern. Before we do the zipper insertion, I just want to talk about how easy it is on fleece to see and get confused from the right and wrong side. You can see that they look really similar, but one quick tip that I have for you is if you stretch it on the cross grain, you'll see that it rolls in one direction to the other. When it rolls, it's curling to the back, which is the wrong side of your fabric. It makes it easy to remember and you don't have to worry about whether or not you have a print. So I'm using a separating zipper with plastic teeth that's great for outerwear. So it's perfect for our jacket. You want to align everything to the outer edge and roll your zipper tape off to the side at a right angle. This will reduce the bulk when stitching. Let's bring it over to the machine and stitch. Make sure you have the right stitch in place. I have it on a left alignment. I like to move the zip, open the zipper up as I'm sewing it so that it doesn't cause any movement on my zipper foot as I'm stitching. While this is sewing, it's a perfect time to tell you about the thread that I selected. You can see that I've chosen red and gray to match my, my fabric. I'm shifting my zipper a little bit up so that it's out of the way and I'll continue to sew all the way down, removing my pins as I work along to prevent it from going underneath the needle. You want to make sure that you use a polyester thread to stretch with your knit fabric. Now that I've stitched the zipper in place, I'm going to attach the placket. You need to, you'll have already joined these together and done your top stitching. Pin it in place directly on your seam, just as your pattern instructions suggest. and then you're gonna stitch right along the edge again in place. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that you may need to adjust your seam stitch width, stitch length, to allow for bulk. I like to move mine up to three. This gives a little extra room for the thick of the polar fleece, and then we will run it right through the machine, along the zipper, again. And if you have a serger, this is the perfect time that you can clean finish it all in one pass. You can attach it and clean finish it. You'll have to move your zipper head just like we did on the first pass and bring it down. So 
So you're gonna keep stitching this, but in the interest of time, I wanted to move on to the top stitching. You'll fold back your placket and prepare it. But in order to actually do it, you need to take, remove your zipper foot. So we'll take the snap off foot on and return to our standard. It's just a snap down in place. Remember, make sure your stitch width is correct. For top stitching, I like to do it a little bit larger. So again, I'll increase my length to three and a half. My needle placement is over to the side to allow for a nice wide stitch. And then you'll just stitch it in place. Riding right along the edge of the zipper. You'll continue along on the other side with the same setup minus the, the placket. You'll have to just follow your instructions, which we'll all have online. You can see this is one that's completely done and how you can see the nice detail underneath. Looking at the jackets, I just want to point out a few more key details. Our top stitching is, right ni is very nicely along the outside edge of all of our seams, and you can use this, this area to highlight any colors. Remember, you want to keep this at a larger, larger, width, larger length so that it allows for all of the thickness of your fabric. I personally like to use the edge joining foot because it gives me a nice even line and then I never have to worry about my needle shifting. You can also add a little bit of elastic to the bottom of your hem and it'll give you nice stretchability and keep all the wind out while you're sitting at those events. So you can see there's double needle top stitching on the cuff which I've also carried over to the hem. It's a great way for you to showcase the bottom piece. Now, you noticed on the red and gray one, I did color blocking across the front. I broke down the top panels to really show off my spirit. But on this one, I've color blocked the side panels and the top yoke. And I've actually left the, the placket to match the main pieces. But when we move over to the black jacket, you can see that while I did do the side panels, sleeve, yoke, and collar all in the red, I actually put the black on the inside for the, for the center front placket, and I, I switched up and blocked the back. This was just another way for you to color block. You can do color blocking any way that you like to kind of infuse your personal style into your team spirit. You can see when you open it, it actually allows the nice colors to pop off on the inside when you do the, the center front placket the same as the main front of your jacket. Make sure you add all of your top stitching details to match your jacket in either coordinating thread or a contrast stitch. It, may, it gives you a nice pop of color and will help you showcase your team spirit.